you have your Bible, we'll go to the first two verses of 2 Kings chapter 22. And we are continuing with our theme. And our theme is transformed to transform. This is what we shall be doing this, the entire of this year. Transformed to transform. And today, as we break the scriptures, we will be dealing with uh, the unique topic of obedience during breaking. Obedience during breaking. As you see that word transformed means change. And so when change is taking place, or when change is taking effect, there are some things that will happen around you or in you that may be a little bit maybe uncomfortable, but God wants to change you or to change things around you. And one of the things that he looks and desires is for your obedience. For that transformation to happen, there has to be some active changes or some things that need to change. And one of the biggest things that God is looking for or will be looking for in your life as he desires to transform you is for you to be obedient. Second Kings chapter 22 verse 1 and 2. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedida, the daughter of Adaiah of Boskath. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in all the way of David, his father. And he did not turn aside to the right or to the left. Father, we bless you for your word this day. We thank you and we honor your name. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to hear from you and to listen from the oracles. We give you glory and we give you honor. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody has a background and all of us came from somewhere and you have your personal historical background that you have been... Uh, you have come from a family or something or someone and there are some things that dictate your background or there are some things that when we see you, we can say this is his background. He has come from somewhere and we know him because he has come from this and this thing, from this person or to this person. And such a person is Josiah. Josiah, he has a background. He came from a family. And this family is not uh, just any family. But as you see, the Bible has ended up in bringing David in the background or in the lineage of Josiah. When you do good especially in the long time, your lineage could be identified with a spiritual lineage and you could be either be identified with one of the patriarchs or one of the great kings because you are walking in the lineage that is desirable. You are doing things in a certain way that we can say this is of this clan. And that was the culture of the Jews. And so one of the things that God works on us and in us is our background. We all have come from families. And the families that you have come from have a certain way of doing things. And unfortunately, sometimes these families, the way they do things or the way they did things, some of them pleased God. Others did not please God. Hence, your background or your past has some issues that you might have come with even in your faith. And these issues slow you or 
affects the development that God has in your life. And so desirable is that God will work in the background that I am or I came from so that I can deal with certain issues that God wants me to do. And one of the persons that I like us to look at is Jacob. Jacob as a background and a certain background. And when Jacob is living his life, he remembers or is sure of some things that he has attained and he wants to deal with them, yet he is scared. God wants to break Jacob. Obedience during breaking. Number one, for sure, I promise you, God will break you. God will break you. God will bring you to a situation of brokenness. And God will bring you to this situation, not because he hates you, but because he wants to deal with your past. Your past may be hindering some of the things that God wants to do in your life. And so there are some things that you have refused to deal with, and God will make you face them so that you can deal with them for you to be more fruitful, and he breaks ordinary people. He breaks people that are normal. He breaks people that are willing and are willing to live with him. This is the story of Jacob in Genesis 32. Jacob wronged Esau or Esau. And Jacob did things that Esau did not like. He stole his birthright and so he ran away with his blessings. Then it has reached a time in the life of Jacob that he wants to deal with this issue but Jacob is still scared of Esau. He's still scared because he know I stole his blessings. And for true, Jacob has gone and he is immensely rich. He has been blessed. But now he's rich but fearful. He's rich and stressed. He's rich but troubled. Why? The Esau factor is still in his mind. He's going forth and he, he, he desires, I wish I could deal with this issue so that I can live freely. And so he, de he designs one day that he will go and make peace with his brother that he stole his blessings from. And so he commands and makes arrangement for three battalions to go ahead of him just to meet Esau and give him gifts. But he himself has no intention of meeting Esau. Do you know why? Because he's scared. He's scared. And so when God saw he did not have the intention of dealing with his past, God, through the angel, engaged him. And so Jacob has sent everybody else and he is lingering behind. The first troop has gone and they have met Esau and they are okay. The second one, they have gone and they have gone and they have met Esau and they are okay. The third one, they have gone and they have met him and they are okay. And now last is Jacob. And he is plotting a strategy to escape. He did not have intentions to meet Esau. So the reason why God breaks Jacob is for him to deal with his past. And so he fights with the angel, and he fights with the angel, and his hip bone is dislocated. Now, with his desire to run away, Jacob cannot now run away. He must meet Esau to deal with his past. He was plotting to go, but now he has been crippled, and so he must face his past. He must go and tell Esau, it's me, your brother, who stole from you. Have you forgiven me? And the way God works, by the time he's meeting Esau, Esau is okay. He has forgiven him. Must he add, add that fight with the angel? Must he? No. But he had to be broken and to be reminded to deal with the past issues that were slowing his progress towards transformation. Obedience is what God wanted, but this guy was planning and plotting things other ways. 
all of us, we have issues in the past. Most of you have refused to deal with those issues. And so God is asking of you, please deal with this issue because I want to move with you. I want to bless you. I have blessed you so far. As I look here, you are blessed. You are blessed. But it could have been better if you dealt with some things. God could have blessed you more. God will bless you more. But there are some things you must deal with them, and you must deal with them. Most of us may be having unforgiveness in our hearts, bitterness, roots that have grown deep, and when you think of those people, you cannot forgive them. God wants you to let go some of those unfinished business. Unfinished issues that are in your life that you are aware of, that are slowing your growth and your development, God wants you to deal with them just like he dealt with Jacob. You must not wait to be struck the hip bone to meet your issue. You must not wait to be struck to deal with your issues and to be crippled. But there are some things that you know that you are engaged in and you are still continuing to engage in that God has not permitted Yet, you still want to be transformed. No, he will not use you the way you are. He will first of all change you, then use you. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. In a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but vessels of earth and wood. If anyone purifies himself from what is ignoble, then he shall be a vessel of noble use consecrated and useful to the owner of the house, ready for any good work. So God is looking at me and he's saying, that's a good vessel. I want to invest in that vessel. That you know, is a good vessel. This is a good vessel. But before you purify yourself, you shall remain in the house. The king will not come and choose you because you are not a noble vessel and your usage in the kingdom is slowed. And God looked at Jacob and said, this guy can be more. This guy can be more. Maybe God is looking at you and is saying, this sister can be more. But you must deal with some of those issues. Some of us are still conjoined with witchcraft. As much as you come to church, you come to church a little bit, but you still believe in witchcraft a little bit. And so those are issues that God is saying, I want to have the maximum of you, but this issue of witchcraft in your background, deal with it. It's in your culture, I agree, but deal with it. Some of us are dealt, are still having issues with issues that are dealing with morality. You come to church a little bit. On Tuesday, church is not anymore. But church picks up again on Friday. The things you do between the other days of the week, there is no witness. And it has been a culture and a culture. And God is saying, I want to deal with you. I will break you if you don't obey immediately. Secondly, you have to cooperate. You have to cooperate. I have three examples of people who refuse to cooperate. And the first one is, is Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4, verse 28. Nebuchadnezzar, after achieving everything, he gave himself the glory. And he said, I, Nebuchadnezzar, am a man of great wealth and great wisdom. Look at Babylon. Babylon is me and me and Babylon. He said these blessings in Babylon are because of me. He did not finish that statement and God sent him to eat grass for seven seasons and move on the falls. Why? Because he refused to cooperate with God when God was doing a work around him. God is calling us to cooperate with him. Pharaoh brought upon Egypt plagues that could have been avoided. Because he chose to be stubborn 
and they chose to try to fight God in what God was doing. But Pharaoh brought himself a lot of issues and he brought Egypt a lot of issues. Why is it so hard for you to cooperate with God? God desires to transform you and to work in you. What is it that is so hard that you cannot cooperate with him? You must choose to cooperate with him. Balak uses Balaam to try to go and cast God's people in Numbers 22. And so when Balaam refuses and he says, no, he sent, he sent people and he says, I don't want the gifts. I will bless the people of God. But Balak insists and tells Balaam, go. And so he saddles his donkey and he goes and go tell him, okay, you want to go, go. But do only what I'll tell you to do. And you know, when you refuse to cooperate, the sad thing is that sometimes you don't see the things that God is telling you to see. Unfortunately, this was a man of God, but they reached a time a donkey was more spiritual than Balaam. Because the donkey could see God and Balaam could not see God. How can an animal, how can an animal be more spiritual, have spiritual insight than man? How can things around you, even maybe things around you are more spiritual than you because you have chosen to be blind? And God is even using them. God is using circumstances, but you are not seeing. God is so annoyed with Balaam at this time, and he keeps on striking the donkey, and the donkey even asks him, now what have I done? And the donkey saw the angel three times, yet Balaam, who was more spiritual, did not see When you disobey, you slow your journey. Anytime I disobey, I slow my journey to where God wants to take me. Anytime I disobey, I slow the things God wants to do in my life. Anytime I disobey, I intentionally just tell God, I want to be blessed next year. I don't want you to bless me this year. And that is not the Christians I have in this church. We want our blessings like yesterday's India. We want blessings our way, but sometimes we slow the journey. Disobedience is loss. Big loss. It's loss. It's, it's a waste of time. It's cosmetic Christianity. If you are disobeying, you are living a life at a loss. You are like a businessman who is so sure you will make a loss, still you are putting your money in that business. Disobedience is loss. As much as you continue disobeying, you are losing it. You will not achieve the things that God wants to do in your life because you are wasting your journey. Would you choose to cooperate with God? And second last is breaking brings fruitfulness. Breaking brings fruitfulness. Paul on the way to Damascus, God is working in this guy and this guy has potential, great potential and God is working in his life and one of the things that God sees in this guy is this guy is fruitful for the kingdom. But he has to be hit by light and he becomes blind for him to see the things that God wants him to do. That experience of Paul was for his fruitfulness. God sometimes will bring some things your way, but he's calling you to fruitfulness. He's calling you to be transformed so that you can be more fruitful. And sometimes the breaking that comes your way will be for your own fruitfulness. Transform transformation may weaken the outer man, but the inner man is being nourished. I'd rather the outer man be weakened a little bit, but inside you are stronger. And when you are, when your stronger man is, is the one that is inside, 
your spiritual encounter is different. Your meditations are different than anybody else. The things you see are not the things people see. When your stronger man is the strongest man and not the outer man, your meditations are different. Your prayers are different. Your devotions are different. Everything you do is different because the inner man has been strengthened and the inner man will be more fruitful if the outer man is broken. And God wants us to be more fruitful. How many of us know that Jesus had a pastor? Jesus Christ had a pastor. Do you know that? Jesus Christ had a pastor. And so you locationally carry the cross. The pastor of Jesus Christ was John the Baptist. He's the one who received him baptized him, and he was there happy that he achieved this. But one thing, Herodias, the wife of Herod, is rebuked by John the Baptist for marrying a relative. And so Herodias puts John the Baptist in prison. And he is there and he is saying, Jesus, the way I've interacted with you as my pastor, I mean, you, me, your pastor, I know you are a man of power. Now I am in prison. Would you please come and rescue me? He was reminded of John chapter 9, verse 23, that now you will carry the cross this time. The cost of discipleship. Sometimes you will go through pain and wait on God, but he will not come at the right time. And so John waits on Jesus, and he waits, and Herodias successfully beheads him. He beheads John the Baptist, and he's dead. And his disciples are stressed. Je Jesus just let John be killed, yet he was his pastor. The cost of discipleship. Sometimes God will let you carry your cross, and he knows what he's doing when he allows us to carry the cross. You will occasionally carry the cross. It will occasionally be painful on your side as a believer. Occasionally you'll go through a lot of pain as a believer. Occasionally things will not go the way you would like them to be. Does God cease to be God? No. God is God. Did he go through pain? Yes, he did. Was he God? Yes, he was. Occasionally, you will go through pain. And finally, learn the voice of the master. Learn the voice of the master. My sheep know my voice is the message behind John chapter 10. If you obey the voice of the one who is in your life, if you totally surrender to him, you will know his voice. No matter how many distractions will come your way, you will be consistent because you know the voice of Jesus and you are sure that this is the master leading me. And so even during the breaking, some of the voices that will come your way will be, this is too much. God cannot be this loving. God cannot be, this is unfair. But if you know that it is a distraction to just lengthen your journey, you will say, I am not listening to you, voice. I am in my spiritual formation. God is at work in me. I will obey him. And eventually, the breaking will be over. Do you know the voice of your God without a shadow of doubt? That no matter how many distractions that are coming, you can sense and know this is God and God is the one that is leading me and you will not be swayed here and there with other voices. Sometimes we like and we shall be, have the option of the easier way out. Yet God wants you to listen to his voice and know his voice 
even when he's breaking you, and stand still and know he is God. I'd like to pray with some people. And the people that I like to pray with are people that you are like Jacob. And there are some things in the past that you have not dealt with. Or you are dealing with. And we are just saying, hold me in prayer. Stand with me in prayer. Would you just trust God and say, Lord, this is me. I'm dealing with some of these issues. Help me as you transform me. As you break me, I need help. I want to obey you. If that's you, just be on your feet as we pray. Maybe you are there and you have learned from Pharaoh and Nebuchadnezzar and Balaam and you are saying, I want to cooperate with God. I want to cooperate with God. I don't want an experience whereby I'm not cooperative. And you are saying, from this day henceforth, Lord, here I am. I don't want to be full of pride like Nebuchadnezzar. I don't want to be full of denial like Pharaoh. And I don't want to be spiritual blind like Balaam. But I want to see you and see you as you walk in me. If that's you, just raise up your hand as you stand. Uh, maybe you are in our midst and you are saying, Father Lord, I am not fruitful. What have I even done for the kingdom? Like Paul, I want to be fruitful. Work in me that I may be fruitful. There is no work that has been attributed to me and the involvement of me in the ministry. And you're telling God, I want to be fruitful. I want to be fruitful. Just raise up your hand again. Maybe you are there and you are like John the Baptist. You are in the season of carrying the cross. Things are heavy on you. Realities of life are not just fair. You are overburdened by issues, pain, and you are saying, I need a helping hand. You are peeping through the window, hoping help will come, but every time it's not help that comes, it's more pain. And you are saying, as I carry the cross, I need prayers. I need prayers. You are saying I need to know the voice of Jesus. There are many things that have distracted me. I want to be consistent in the journey of faith. And that is your prayer. If that's your desire, just stand up as